Well, she sings a tribute to Marilyn Monroe, Phoebe Legere. What's your fascination with Marilyn Monroe? We'll find out in a moment. Here is a woman who is an amazing performer, a downtown diva, and a multi-talented, not only songstress, but designer, musician, and a very bright woman, a blue blood, a Mayflower descendant, as it were. Welcome, Phoebe. It's a delight to have you. How are you doing, Judy? What a pleasure. Now, you design your own things as you sing. This, uh, you made this outfit yourself? No, this was designed by Josie Notori. I modeled this in uh, W last week. Well, let's see. What have you got there? Well, I don't want to be accused of uh, showing off my anatomy. What do you mean, what have I got? <laughs> I mean, let's see what the, uh, what the um, design is there. Do you want me to stand up or...? Okay. That's pretty sexy, Phoebe. Huh? Now, you are a... You, you came over, your family was descended from the uh, Mayflower, right? You went to Vassar College. Mm -hmm. You're not just a, a wild woman performer. You're actually a very bright woman. Oh, thank you, Judy. You're very smart, too. Well, I, I am impressed. I mean, I came to see you at Nell's, this very in club downtown that likes to keep a line out there like Studio 54, right? Now, I was very impressed because you were, you were doing a fabulous act. I mean, your singing ranges from French songs to Irish ballads to Cole Porter to really heavy rock. Oh, I love music. And. In the meanwhile, nobody was paying attention. They were all talking, and I thought, what is going on here? I went up and I said to you, how do you cope with this? And you gave me the most intelligent answer. How did you cope with that, that audience? You said you create a cycle of a light around you. Is that what I said? Yes. Well, I had just come from the ballroom where I had a, a rapt audience of people paying a lot of money to hear me. And I went in and played for a, a lot of models. I think it was mostly beautiful young models suffering from narcissistic personality defect. In other words, they don't want to be confronted with someone who's doing something important. They want to stay within their own rather superficial kind of trance of self-love. And... Uh, I don't know why they weren't listening. I guess, um, I guess it uh, just didn't interest them. Well, what Phoebe said that I thought was pretty terrific. You put yourself in a cycle of light. You go into your music, and you don't care that much about whether or not people are responding because you know you're giving your soul, your heart and your soul. Well, the music is its own reward. It's a very abstract art form, and there's plenty inside of the music. Um, I mean, music has nothing to do with the visual. It really has nothing to do with image. It has nothing to do with this world. It's really about something else. Now, you're, you're a downtown woman. You also work uptown. You've been in Carnegie Hall as well as all the, the really in clubs downtown. People refer to you as uh, really strange, unusual. How do you feel about that? I mean, do you feel about yourself that you're that you're? Who said a, I was strange? Oh, lots of people say. I mean, strange in a good way. That this is a, a special person, very very unusual. Do you feel about yourself that you're unusual? I feel completely normal. I'm just a small town girl, from a completely normal family. Um, I've developed my talents. I mean, I love beauty, and uh, I'm just like everybody else. I'm just a mammal. You think you're like everybody else? Somehow I don't feel like you're like everybody else. You don't dress like everybody else. You don't perform like everybody else. You, w you don't wear clothes like everybody else. I mean, you get up, you do an incredible act. You, have, you, you sing in five languages, and you do a, a range, as I said, of all this different kind of music. Um, you're, you're obviously very philosophical. Uh, that doesn't seem to me like it's really like everybody else. I mean, didn't you stand out at, at, at Vassar? Weren't you different from some of the other girls at school? No, I was pretty invisible. Uh -huh. why, do, why do you think that people like you so much? What, what, what makes you so captivating and popular? Oh, thank you for your nice words. That really makes me feel good. 
Um, I don't know, I suppose people see a reflection of themselves in me, the people who like me, see that they could really be doing all the things I do if they took the time to do them. You think so? Yeah, I think so. That's, that's very lovely and a very nice uh, approbation for, for all of us. You opened for David Bowie? Yes, I did. On his tour? His national tour. What was that like? I love David. He's so smart and so handsome and he was so kind. Even better live than he is on record. Now, you, I, I was mentioning that, uh, I was about to mention that you look like Madonna or that people have made allusions to you and Madonna. That upsets you though. Why is that? I hope I don't look like Madonna. But what, what upsets you about being, uh, being put like, in the same class as I don't as like Madonna? the way she looks. Uh -huh. But I mean, she's a, she's a short girl with a big bottom, and I just don't like the way she looks, and I don't like the way she sounds, mm -hmm. and I don't want to look or sound like that. Mm -hmm. Is there somebody you have as a as an idol, or somebody you look up to, or who's a musician, or just a role model in general that you think is a a, a person who's accomplished a lot, or you admire? Well, I love the great. Uh, black musicians of the golden age of American music, uh, people like uh, Art Tatum, uh, Duke Ellington, Count Basie, Billie Holiday, all the greats of the golden era, the real talents. And you, incur and you use them in your act all the time, which is really astonishing. It, I, your work is, is fabulous. It's oh, very thank you. You're so sweet to say so. Oh, I think I, I would go any time to see it. I mean, it's really fascinating how you can get into all these different characters and how into yourself you are and how you're able to project yourself. I think that's really, truly amazing. Uh, what is the Phoebe Legere game show that you do sometimes on stage? Oh, well, something I developed about five or six years ago. Um, Can we play it with everybody? Sure, I'll play it with you. Okay, thank you. So, how, how would it work? Well, we, could ask the, we could ask the, the viewers. Okay, I'll ask you a question. Do you believe in God? Okay, Sherry from North Carolina. Hi. You um, have to, we're, we're playing the Phoebe Legere game show, then you can ask your question, but this is what happens in part of Phoebe's act, in the midst of all her wonderful performance. Yeah. So you need to answer the question. Um, yes, I do believe in God. You win. <laughs> Give me your address and I'll send you a prize. Okay, uh, wonderful, so you'll have to stay on the line. What might the prize be that Sherry would get? What would you like, Sherry? Um, it doesn't matter really. One thing I'd like to say is, um, it's good to be different. I mean, uh, it stands you out from everybody. Uh, you win again. <laughs> Two prizes. And first of all, you're very beautiful and um, Thank I- Thank you, darling. Three prizes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I admire you for three things. Um, it's because um, if I had any choice, you know, um, I'd always want to be different because um, I wouldn't like, I would want to be like anybody else. I'd want to be my own person and dress the way I wanted and act the way I wanted. And I mean, who cares what everybody else thinks? It's the way I want to be. That a girl. Good <laughs> for you. That's wonderful. We're, we're, we're all proud of you. That's terrific. That's the kind of philosophy that you would appreciate, right? I like her. Yes. Sherry's nice. That's why she gets lots of prizes, right? Yes. She should just send in her address so I can send them to her. Uh huh. What, if you had to say what your philosophy of life would be, what would you say it is? Life is a great mystery to me. I'm just trying to stay alive. What do you mean, stay alive? What's the difficulties in staying alive? I mean, what, Well, what I live in New York City. Mm -hmm. I think that... Um, I can't really give you a philosophy, but... I can tell you what I think success is. What's that? I think it's to stay true to your own values, to do everything with integrity, to shoot very high, to tell the truth. Lovely inspirational messages. We'll be back with Phoebe Legere and her game show and your questions here on Talk Live when we return in a second.
opened her eyes I kissed her once or twice She was still alive And everything was nice well, that was the performance of Phoebe Leger, who's here with us live in the studio. And this here is her artwork. You are an artist of many sorts. Phoebe, what are we looking at here? Well, it's just a carrot and a tomato. Uh, nothing special, nothing extraordinary. But this is um, a kind of a glorification of the everyday, exactly what I am. And uh, my paintings are showing at the Real Art Gallery. You can buy this painting. Call 777-2215. How much does it and cost? And order now. How much does it cost? $500. Uh-huh. Melissa from Indiana, welcome. You're on Talk Live. Hi. Hi. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, Phoebe, I was wondering where you received your musical and your artistic training. Oh, Melissa, thank you so much for asking about me. Where are you calling from? Indiana. Indiana, how great. I studied piano at the New England Conservatory. I received my degree in piano performance at Vassar College, my master's in music uh, composition at NYU. And uh, I also studied art at Vassar and with my parents who are both painters. Thank you for asking, what do you do? I'm a student at Indiana University in Bloomington. How old are you? I'm 22. You sure sound sweet, Melissa. <laughs> well, thank you. I just want to compliment you. on You're just a breath of fresh air. You really are compared to some of the other performers. God bless you, darling. Why is that, Melissa? She's, she's just herself. There's nothing superficial. I think that she's very true to herself, and she is just who she is. That's the nicest compliment you could give anyone, Melissa. Lovely. Well, that's something you need to do for yourself, too, then, if you would appreciate it. Life, uh, people are like mirrors to us, right, Melissa? So what exactly. you see in Phoebe is what you need and want and hopefully have for yourself. Thanks for calling. Uh -huh. Kirk from New York, welcome. You're on Talk Live. Hi, Phoebe. How are you doing? Hi, Kirk. I just have one question. Um, I was kind of taken um, with your question to the other girl about God. Um, kind of wanted to know where you were coming from, from your religious background and being different and how how that kind of ties into being different because I'm kind of different too and what's different about you um I I don't know really know how to answer that live on the air but um I'm just wondering how your religious background um kind of uh which I'm a little nervous here um <laughs> you're coming through loud and clear where are you calling from Kirk where do you live in New York in Forest Hills Queens right I love Forest Hills. It's green there. Yes, it is. So how would you answer Kirk's question? I believe in all the religions. They're either all right or they are all wrong. I like them all. I like the music best. You create the music out of everything. I think that's really... Uh, you, you hear it all the time. It comes from everywhere, right? Holly from Mississippi. Welcome. You're on Talk Mississippi. Live. Mississippi? Oh, what a miracle. Yes, I, I want to know who you admire most in the world. In the world? In the world. I like children. I mean, I just love them all. The little babies. I saw one about a week old smiling at some stranger today. That's the person I admire most today, that little baby. Full of love, so soft and sweet. How about you? Who do you admire? Um, probably my mother. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's she like? Do you, do you admire anybody famous? Anybody famous that you've worked with, maybe? Well, I like Rod Stewart. Oh, yeah. Why I must that? agree. Why Not that? that I know him or anything, but... I like the way he sings. <laughs> sings full of heart. Has a lot of heart. Well, Holly, are you admiring Phoebe? Absolutely. What for? Can Everything. you see the Mississippi? Can you see the river from where you are? Uh, no, not quite. <laughs> Gee, I wish I could see it right now. What, what is it about Phoebe you're admiring, Holly? I just think she's open and honest, and she's just being herself, and I admire her. That's How'd it. you get that name? Um, it was given to me by a very good friend of my mother's when I was born. And she admires her mother. Thank you, Holly. <laughs> Thank you. Sweet. Uh, people wonder whether or not your name is real, or if you got it from somewhere. Yes, it's my real name. Mm -hmm. 
I was thinking about admiring things. So uh, a phrase I admired from uh, seeing the Will Rogers Follies that it was a terrific show, and uh, Keith Carradine does a great job. And this is a fabulous line. I think you will appreciate coming from where you're coming. Is a, a living is what you get, but a life is when you give. You like that? Oh yeah, I'm dying to see that show. Douglas from Virginia, welcome. You're on Talk Live. Yes, Phoebe. This is my first time of hearing about you and of seeing you, and I think you're great. Uh, and you call yourself a chanteuse. Now, Piaf was oh, a great Oh, I'd never say that about her. myself. And what do you think of her? I love her. Or what did you think of her? I love her. In fact, I was down in St. Bart's last week, and I met Philippe Dubon, who is the son of Charles Dumont, who wrote the famous Piaf song, Non, je ne regrette rien. No, I regret nothing. And uh, I was asking Philippe about uh, Piaf. He knew Piaf as a child. And he said she was very nice. What is it about Marilyn Monroe that, you, that you're attached to because you sing these songs to her? I'm not attached to, to her, really. Um, that song came to me in a dream. And I wrote it down exactly as I heard it in the dream. I was watching Some Like It Hot that night. And I went to sleep. And I woke up and I heard that song, Marilyn Monroe. Now, you were shy when you were a kid. I'm still very shy. Think so? But you let yourself be who you are. That's obviously what well, everybody I'm has picked trying. up about you. I'm trying. And for those of you who really have sensed a part of her, let me tell you, you should find out where she's playing, which is in a lot of clubs in New York, and come see the extravaganza and the multi-talent of Phoebe Legere. She's hot, she's happening, she's here, you've met her. Thank you very much. I Phoebe, hope they'll come see here. my Hello, Mrs. President to the Theater for the New City, June 27th through 29th, the musical I've written about the first black woman president of the United States. All right, I like that. Thank you, Phoebe. Thank Thanks you for Judy. being here. Now, uh, while everybody can't just let it all be the way it is and feel the way you do, you obviously are an inspiration. And as my favorite phrase from Alberta Hunter goes, if you could dream it, you could be it. It sounds like a theme for tonight. I'm uh, delighted to have been here with you. I'm Dr. Judy Kuriansky. Tune in next weekend when we will bring you the best of talk weekend starting next Friday at 7 p.m. all through Memorial Day. Join Beverly Sills talking with Mike Wallace, sportscaster Dave Sims and Walt Frazier, and Los Angeles bad boy of talk Tom Likas with the Reverend Al Sharpton and Rush Limbaugh. I'm Dr. Judy Kuriansky. Pleasure to be with you. Have a wonderful night.